Hi, it's Derek Grant with the Philadelphia Flyers, and you're listening to Snow the Goalie. Welcome into Snow the Goalie, and uh, we're lucky today to be joined by uh, Flyers center, or forward, I should say, since you can play any position, Derek Grant. Derek, thanks for joining us here on the program today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, teams won nine games in a row, and just to talk about how long that is, that's before you even got here, it started, right? Ever since you got here... The, the team just is flawless. I mean, you know, maybe it's you and Nate getting here, and that's the reason why you guys are playing so well. But can you talk about what it's like to just jump into a team that has got that mojo going and really be, you know, be a part of it? And I mean, you've got five points in the six games you played with the team, just to be part of it right away. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot of fun. I think anytime you join a new team and and you're winning, it uh, it makes it a lot easier. And uh, you know, it's the fun time of year when uh, you know things are ramping up towards playoffs and. It's uh, it's fun to be jumping in and, and uh, contributing and, and winning games. Is is it tough to really you know you, you see the thing the team's going well and you're the new guy and you're just immediately asked to do something a certain way. It's just almost like I just got to do it that way and that's it. No you know don't even question anything because it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Yeah, no, exactly. I think uh, there's a good thing going here right now, and uh, obviously. When you come in and a team's winning, you don't want to be the, the reason they start losing. So it's uh, it's great for me and Nate to come in and, and uh, you know, keep this thing going. You, you know, in your career, you've been a guy who's bounced around, right? it's fair to say. Right? I mean, yeah. we, I remember doing an interview. You, you ever meet Mike McKenna, the goalie? Yeah, yeah, yeah I played so, with him. Yeah. yeah, okay, you played with McKenna. Yeah. So, like, he came on the show last year and he said uh, he called himself the biggest suitcase the NHL's <laughs> ever seen. Uh, you're not quite up to his level, but, I mean, this is seven teams in seven years. But it, does it mean a little bit something more now? This was the first time you were traded that, you know, hey, a team really wants me. Uh, like that I'm doing something right in this league and, and a team wants me. Does that make you have a different mentality a little bit? Yeah, I think it's it's a little different uh, this time around. I think you know other times when you're just signing as a free agent and, and one and done or whatever, it's uh, it's a little uh, disheartening, I guess. But uh, this time, you know, you're on a team that's struggling, and uh, obviously, teams making playoff pushes are, are adding pieces uh, late in the year. And and uh, if you're if you're one of those pieces that's uh, you know valued by somebody, that you can come in and and help make a difference down the stretch and and um, you know shore up some depth. It's uh, you know, it's a good feeling. What changed for you this year? I mean, starting back in Anaheim, what, what, was it just opportunity? Um, or you know, because all of a sudden you, you're setting career bests and goals and points. And was it just an opportunity to play that you finally had that, like, full season chance to do it? Yeah, I think, you know, it probably started a couple of years ago for me. We had, um, it was back in Anaheim, we had a couple injuries to, to Getzlaff and Kessler. And, um, you know, I was... Uh, put in a position where I had to play 20 minutes a night and and it was kind of the first time I've had that opportunity in the NHL and and be surrounded by uh, you know highly talented players and and you know I just tried to make the most of it and and have fun with it and and then last year you know I was on a deep Pittsburgh team to start the year and and then went back to Anaheim and um, you know I think since I went back there I I uh, played pretty much every game with Carter Rowney and you you develop chemistry with a certain guy and and it was the same this year you know I think we had uh, developed that, and, and uh, you know we had a good, good group of guys there, and, and uh, you know a good support cast, and we had a good PK and stuff. And I think when you have that confidence, and the coach gives you that confidence, um, you know you just you you can build off that. And, and um, you know I, I've been a scorer at, at other levels, and, and it was something that I I knew I could do, and I knew I had somewhere, but uh, you know it's something that didn't translate right away for me at this level, and. Um, you know, something I worked at, uh, you know, over the past seven, eight years, and, and you know, finally it's coming together a little bit. You, you talk about playing with the same guy and getting and getting comfortable playing with him. One of the things here, I mean, barring an injury like with JVR, um, is, is AV is really locked in. Here are our lines. Here are our defensive pairs. You guys are going to go out. You're going to roll those four lines, roll those three pairs, and this is what we're going to go with. Does that, when you're a player and you come into a situation, whether it's you've been here forever or you're, you're new to the situation, does that almost make you feel better about it to say, you know what, I know who I'm going to be out there with every time I'm on the ice, as opposed to teams that are constantly shuffling guys around? Yeah, yeah, I think, you know, that's just a familiarity thing. And, um, you know, you can learn pretty quickly playing with guys. You know, their tendencies are... Um, whether you're talking on the bench or between periods or whatever, it's uh, you know the communication early on is is huge. But I think just getting reps in um, practice games, it's um, you know you become used to their tendencies and and uh, you know you can build off every game and and whether you change things here and there or, or not, it's uh, you know it's something you 
you work on as a unit and uh you know you become familiar with guys and and uh you know there's a comfort level in that for sure having the success that you're having this year does it make you appreciate all that you had to go through to get to this year i mean to bouncing from team to team and you know whether it's waivers or just signing as a free agent or whatever the case might be does it almost make you appreciate it that much more that now that you got the success that it man it was worth all that time all that effort yeah i think i think you know everyone has a different path and a different road to get to where they get to and um you know for me i wouldn't change anything it's it's uh it's been a fun journey for me it's um, you know, obviously it's, it's nice to, to have stability and guys that have that are, are definitely fortunate, but, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's been a lot of fun and, you know, I've taken, um, you know, I haven't taken a day for granted and, you know, I try to, um, you know, enjoy every day and, and, you know, whether it's here somewhere else or wherever I am, it's, um, you know, you have a job and, and that's got to be your focus. And, and, you know, I've, I've had the chance to play with a lot of great players and, and learn from a lot of guys and, um, you know, pick up things from, from multiple guys and multiple teams, and, and I think that's, uh, you know, benefited me in the long run. I heard you did a uh, radio interview uh, with friends of ours over at uh, 93.3 WMMR, Preston and Steve show, and they asked you about uh, losing your teeth, right? Can, you, can yeah. you tell one of those stories? Like, I, I, I want to just let our listeners listen to it as well. Can you talk about, like, the, the one that really sticks out to you most? Yeah, I think there's a couple instances, but the, the main <laughs> one was... Uh, I think we were on a power play. It was five or six years ago, and uh, the shot had gone wide, and I had been knocked down in front and lost my gloves. So it was in a, a tough spot to get up with skates everywhere. So um, you know, I kind of got stuck on the ice, and the goalie had spun and, and decided to get up heel first, or, or oh. for some reason. And I just saw the, the skate coming straight at my face. So um, lucky enough, it, it didn't cut me or anything. It just knocked out a couple of teeth. So. Um, <laughs> You know, it was a long process to get uh, lots of needles to get those out, but uh, you know, it's it's one of those things that that happens to to pretty much everyone that plays. <laughs> um, take me back to uh, you know growing up where you were from out in BC. Tell, you know, I like to ask guys what their towns like, especially Canadian you got Canadian guys, because we here in Philadelphia we have no idea. We're a big city, right? Yeah. We have no idea what it's like out there. And when I, I when I was traveling and going out to these uh, to these different cities, I was like, this is a whole different world around here. So can, can you tell me a little bit about where you're from in BC? Yeah, I grew up in Abbotsford, um, you know, a smaller town, about an hour out of, outside of Vancouver, and um, you know, it was great. It was uh, it was a town that wasn't small enough to know everybody, but uh, you know, you had. A lot of friends through hockey and stuff that would be at different schools so you, you network pretty quick and um you know it's a big farming town uh, the the outskirts of the town were were pretty much all farms and and so a lot of my friends uh we didn't have a farm but a lot of my friends were farmers so spent a lot of time at the farms whether it was you know chickens cows pigs and and uh you know it was a lot of fun you got to you know ride dirt bikes and and do stuff outside that you you probably can't do in the city and um, you know, we had a we had a great group of friends uh, that I that I met mostly through hockey, and uh, you know we had quite a few at at school as well. So um, you know it was busy, and both my sisters played hockey, so my parents were were, were really busy. We were at the <laughs> rink a lot, um, you know, whether watching my sisters or, or watching you know friends, uh, brothers and sisters. It was uh, it was a busy time, but but I loved uh, you know every second I got to spend at the rink. Yeah, did you grow? Any of those guys you grew up with? Did they ever? Did they make it to the league as well? Yeah, there's, I mean, there's a few guys around, um, probably none of the guys that I grew up playing with um, that are playing here, but um, definitely guys I played spring hockey with, you know, you mix in different cities, uh, kind of Vancouver-based teams, and, and you know, I played against guys like Mark, Martin Jones my whole life, and, um, you know, Tyler Johnson and those guys, they were kind of on our rival team um, growing up, and and so it was a lot of fun to play against. Uh, there's probably two um, solid spring teams. Uh -huh. And then in the winter hockey, we would uh, we'd basically face the same team. Um, they had a club team that they played with. And, and so it was a good rivalry growing up playing against those guys. And it's, it's nice to you know, still see those guys playing and, and still have a bit of a rivalry there. You ended up going to Michigan State. Um, but you did try junior hockey for a year before that, right? I played junior A. Junior yeah. A, okay, yeah. okay. Um, talk about what it was you know, making that decision to finally decide, you know what, look, let's try the NCAA route because more and more guys are making it to the league now from the NCAA than ever before. And did, did you realize that at that age it was like, you know what, that's probably my best path to get there? 
Yeah, I think, you know, it was, it was weird for me. I was, um, I was always a fan of college hockey, which was, um, you know, not the norm uh, in Canada. You know, yeah. everyone's major junior. And I, was, I always liked it. Um, but obviously there was pressures to go the other way. And I think when I was 15 and they had the WHL Bantam draft, uh, I think I was all about five foot two. So <laughs> I, I didn't get drafted in that. And I was a small guy growing up, uh -huh. um, which I think benefited me. I learned to play small. And then when I finally grew at 16 or whatever, I, um, you know, I, I still wanted to go college. And, and I think that was kind of the time when more kids from Canada started to go to U.S. college. And the BCHL um, was such a good filter league to the NCAA. And, and we had a pretty good team. And, and we had a player, um, Taylor Stepshin, who was, who was an unbelievable player. And so he had a lot of guys coming to watch him. And I was kind of a late developer, and, and I think um, having a guy like that that a lot of teams were coming to scout, um, you know, it benefited me um, when I finally started to turn it on and, and uh, you know, develop into, into a better player. And, um, yeah, I, was, I went on a visit to a few schools, but Michigan State, as soon as I went there, you know, it's, it felt like the right place for me and, you know, the big, big college atmosphere and stuff from, from a Canadian um, <laughs> We don't have that, right. and so when I went there and saw that you know the football stadium and the fans and the basketball team, and um, they had just just won a national championship in 2007, the hockey team. So, um, you know, I just thought it was it was a great fit for me. Now, did that? I mean, I, you know, obviously you you guys aren't just hockey guys. I mean, you guys are sports fans in general. So, going to a school like that, I mean, with Michigan State being as good as they are, especially NCAA basketball, and you know they were really comp not this year, but they've been competitive in football as well. Um, it was that kind of a really cool experience as well? Yeah, yeah, I think, like I said, it's it's not something we have a lot of in yeah. Canada. You know, I think um, our football team at my high school, you know, maybe one or two guys ever went and played college um, in the States. And, uh -huh. and so it wasn't, it wasn't like it is in the States where you have the Friday night football and everyone in the whole school goes. It wasn't like that at all. So for me to go there and, um, you know, we had a student athlete center there, so you get to know a lot of the guys and, and take some classes with them. And um, our basketball team was really good when I was there, and our, so was our football team. So that was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I think my first first like real memory from there was we had a, our first official practice at 6 a.m. I think because um, of all the NCAA rules, and, and Michigan was playing Michigan State at home um, football at noon. So it was about. 5.30 in the morning, pouring rain, dark out, and I was walking over to the rink for practice, and there was already people outside tailgating, and I, <laughs> and I couldn't believe it, you know, it's, it's not something we have here, and, right. and I think that was, um, you know, when you realize how big that college football is, and, and how important it is to people, and um, it was just a lot of fun to be around in sport. That's awesome. Um, outside of uh, hockey, what, the, what are some of your hobbies, like what do you like to do? Yeah, well, I mean, in BC, there's lots of stuff to do outside. Um, I used to, well, I have a, you know, four-wheel ATV and, and a buddy of mine, um, you know, we'd always go up in the mountains and, and ride the logging trails and stuff and, um, you know, try to find cool viewpoints and stuff up in the mountains and yeah. um, that and then, like, fishing or anything outside I love to do. Um, you fish for sturgeon, right? Yeah, sturgeon's a big, big thing out there. And a buddy of mine, he actually went to Michigan State before me. He has a... A big uh, charter company there, so we like to get out there. And then um, usually once a summer, Andrew Ladd will have his uh, charity fishing tournament, uh -huh. and that's a lot of fun because you get a bunch of guys out, and it's a couple days of just out on the boat with the guys, and and uh, you know some people that uh, you know pay pay good money to come and, and fish with us. So it's it's always a lot of fun, and um, it's for a great cause. And, and, and I don't think people it. realize how big sturgeon are. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, they're like, mo they're like the dinosaurs of, yeah, of fish, they're, right? They're big. I mean, <laughs> I mean, sometimes you can get them like small if, if you're trying, um, they'll do tagging programs. So it's, uh, you'll, they'll catch some little guys, but for the most part, when we're out there, we're trying to get the, the big ones. And, um, you know, I think my biggest is probably about nine and a half feet long. So, wow. Yeah. You take them to the shore and they're so tired by the time, um, you get them there that they'll pose usually, uh, they'll pose uh, pretty pretty well for pictures, and, and then they take off and they're on their way. <laughs> yeah, so. that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Are you a um, like a, like a streamer? Like you stream movies or shows or stuff like you know? And if so, what do you watch? Yeah, I, you know, I'm on the Netflix and the Hulu, but yeah. uh, 
I, I bounce around. You know, I think if I'm just at home during the day, I'll throw something light on like Friends. Uh-huh. Um, that's, that's a good background show for me. <laughs> Uh, I got into Game of Thrones, which yeah. is a little um, different for, for what I normally watch, but you know I, I loved it. It was such a good show. That's probably the big one that, that I was into. Um, other than that, you know, we watched like Shit's Creek, which is a Canadian show. It's, yeah. it's a good one. And my girlfriend got me into that, so that's uh, kind of what we've been watching. Final right now. season was this year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've been we've been trucking through that uh, right now. It's been it's a, it's a good show. Now I usually have a partner who unfortunately couldn't be here today, and we fight all the time about th- if you were stuck on an island and you can only have one hockey movie to have <laughs> with you for the rest of your life to watch on repeat. Which would it be? Well, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> I think I got to go with the original Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks. Yeah. That's the first time someone's given yeah. us that. But that's it's, a good one, though. That's that's good. I usually say Slapshot. Yeah, Slapshot's a good one. Miracle obviously is right. Is tremendous. He always said. Guess what he says? Goon. Goon. <laughs> that's a classic <laughs> too. But no, the 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 Mighty Ducks one. I think just childhood memories that come with it. Sure. And, and uh, you know, it's just such a funny movie. Uh, especially now watching it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, last year we actually got to meet a lot of the staff um, oh. and the actors that were a part of that. Oh, that's and cool. So they're all grown up now, and, and some of them are still the exact same, like Averman. So it was, uh, <laughs> it was pretty cool because we were excited to meet them. They were excited to meet us. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool to, uh, to look back and, and all the memories I think you have from that. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Derek, I really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, well, I do have one last question. Since you got here in Philly, have you had a chance to try any of the famous things in Philly, like soft pretzels or, or cheese steaks or anything like that? <laughs> you know, we've been... Uh, we've been looking up cheese steaks and we've heard multiple different places. So I think we're trying to figure out which one to try first. I've had them here on the road before, uh-huh. um, but I've, I've yet to go this time around for one. Um, but uh, it's definitely on the it's bucket on list. It's on the list. we got to get it done. you got to yeah. get it done. Thanks again for joining us here on, on Snow the Goalie. All the best to you and we'll see you down the road. Thank you.